Wednesday, June the 24th, and Megan and I are here for Mega Mega Wednesday. We are pre-recording it because there are meetings in life tomorrow morning. Um, good morning, Megan. Good morning, Rox. How are you? I'm tired. I mean, I'm tired today. I wonder if I will be tired tomorrow. I mean, probably. You have to wake up early for your meeting tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, you just bought this book, didn't you? I did, because I'd actually run out of all of the appropriate books I had. So I, as a teacher, have no problem buying books that are great for my classroom and that are fun to read. Well, that's pretty cool. So what do you know about this book? I know that the artwork is stunning. The artwork is gorgeous. It's written by Lucuda Nyong'o. Um, and I know it's about skin color and about accepting yourself. And it's a really beautiful story. I have read it once before, but not many times. Awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I I saw this book, First Book Canada, who are uh, an incredible Canadian charity uh, who connect young people with books that they wouldn't otherwise have. Um, First Book Canada came to our school and they brought like more books than I've ever seen. Like if you were opening a bookstore, it's the amount of books that you likely would need. And Amazing. they gave... I think three to every child at Rose. And so I saw many copies of this because that's another great thing about First Book Canada is that they, um, they tend to only give out books that are uh, brand new and perfect. It's not yeah. like, here you go, underserved child. Take this old book with these wet corners and... That has the library sticker and the one dollar, you know, the yeah. five bin. Yeah, so they they handed this book out, and I gave them all out, and I was like, this book looks phenomenal. Yes, you should take it, you should take it, you should take it. But I, I have never read it, and you said it might make you cry. Yeah, I'm a real big sap when it comes to stories. I wonder if it'll <laughs> make me cry. It, get, it gets me choked up, and especially books about, you know, loving who you are really get to me as a person. Like get me themselves. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna be quiet and drink my coffee, and uh, I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna listen to this book. I'm excited. Great. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start this out with a preface. I may pronounce things wrong because it's not my native language. Lukuda um, Nyong'o is from Kenya, I do believe, if I'm not making that up. Yes. She's a Kenyan actress, so she uses her home language, and I don't speak it. So I'm going to try, but anyone can correct me if I am wrong. I like to learn. So this is Sylvie, and by Lakuta Nwango, and Vashti Harrison did the, did the beautiful illustrations. Vashti Harrison. That's a beautiful name. That, uh, did she do something else? I don't know. You'll have to look that up. I'm doing it. <laughs> Sylvie was born the color of midnight. She looked nothing like her family. Not even a little, not even at all. Mama was the color of dawn. Baba, the color of dusk. And Mish, Mish, her sister, was the color of high noon. Hardly anyone at school looked like Sylvie either. People gave her sister Mish pet names like Sunshine and Ray and Beauty. People gave Sylvie names like Blackie and Darkie and Night. So we felt, felt hurt every time. She hid away while her sister made lots of friends. So her sister's playing, and so in the corner by herself. I like that they're, can you go back for a second? You see how they're all wearing uniforms? Yeah. So uh, this, I think they're Kenyan school uniforms. Yeah, so this is like standard in public schools in, in Kenya, right? Everybody wears uniforms. So we dreamed of being the same color as her sister. She wanted real friends too see her dreams. I love the art in this book. It's just so beautiful. I found out who Vashti Harrison is, by the way, and I'm going to show everybody pictures at the end. Beautiful. So, we got, so she got the biggest eraser she could find and tried to rub off a layer or two of her darkness. 
She crept into Mama's room and helped herself to her makeup. Oh no, she would hear about this from Mama later. So we decided to work from the inside out. She ate only the lightest, brightest foods. Bananas and white bread. Oh my goodness, so much white stuff. It was an interesting theory she had though, work from the inside out. What a stomach ache. She went to bed early and turned to God for a miracle. Dear Lord, why do I look like midnight when my mother looks like dawn? Please make me as fair as the parents I'm from. I want to be beautiful, not just to pretend. I want to have daylight. I want to have friends. If you hear me, my Lord, I would like to comply and would like to comply. May I wake up as bright as the sun in the sky. Amen. When Mama came in to wake her for school the next morning, so we rose to find not a trace of daylight in her midnight skin. You can see how upset she is in that picture. Silway told Mama everything. Mama asked, what is your name? Silway, she muttered, and what does it mean? Star, Silway whispered. How many moves have meanings? Brightness is not in your skin, my love. Brightness is just who you are. As for beauty, Mama said, rubbing Sylvie's stomach the way she always did to comfort her, you are beautiful. Well, you are beautiful to me, but you can't rely on what you look like to make you feel beautiful, my sweet. Real beauty comes from your mind and your heart. It begins with how you see yourself, now how, not how others see you. Now get up and out you go. How could she, as dark as she was, have brightness in her? How could she have beauty when no one but her mother seemed to see it? What about her day? How could she be a star? That night, a shooting star appeared at Solway's window. The night sent me, the star said. Come with me. Solway hopped up. Onto the star, and off they went. That's beautiful. Isn't it? Long ago, at the beginning of time, said the star, there was night and day, and they were sisters. This one is beautiful. They loved each other very much. But people didn't treat the sisters the same. Night and the day, the beautiful hair. People gave Jay pet names like lovely and nice and pretty. People gave night names like scary and bad and ugly. She felt hurt every time. Well, night got fed up and walked right off the earth. Day stayed behind and enjoyed making everybody happy in the sun. But then the day grew too long. Day began to miss her sister. So did everyone else. See, they start out being happy and dancing, and they've got less energy, and then they're just very tired. There had to be a way to get her back. Day set off to find night. And she did. I miss you, said Day. I miss you too, said night. But you don't know what it's like to be treated badly for being dark. You're right, I don't, they replied. But what I do know is that we need you just the way you are. Come and see. I like how the sun and the story are sort of partitioned in a three-on-one. It's kind of like comical stuff. It's really cool. Night returned and the people rejoiced. We need the darkest night to get the deepest rest. We need you so that we can grow and dream and keep our secrets to ourselves. The stars chimed in. Brightness isn't just for daylight. Light comes in all colors. And sunlight can only be seen in the dark. While day had a golden glow, with night everything had a silver sheen. Elegant and fine. Day told her sister, when you are darkest is when you are the most beautiful. It is when you are the most you. Could it be that night did not need to change? Not even a little? Not even at all? Now 
Now that night and day were back together, a little bit of night returned to day in the form of shadows, and a little bit of day returned to night in the form of moonlight. They were inseparable from that moment on, and promised to celebrate the brightness in each other, whether people chose to see it or not. You see, the star explained, we need them both, on their sunniest days and their darkest nights, and every shade in between. Together they make the world we know, light and dark, strong and beautiful. The earth is kind of, the sunlight makes it look like this, the, the lights are moving. Solway rose the next morning, beaming. There would be no hiding anymore. She belonged out the world, dark and beautiful, bright and strong. And if she ever needed a reminder of her dark, of her brightness, she could look up at the sky on the darkest night to see for herself. Solway felt beautiful, inside and out. And that was outstanding. Beautiful story. It's so gorgeous. Um, the when, when authors and illustrators write books about uh, beauty, like physical beauty, and then they don't convey it with beautiful art, or like they convey it in a style that's not stunning, it, it has much less impact, right? Yeah, it feels flat. It does it feel flat, but this it was just exceptional. It's such a beautiful, like, I love the way they changed how the story was written, like it's a sort of like comic book style. It, it flowed it read it beautifully, and it wasn't just the love yourself message. It was acknowledge that you have you know highs and lows, and everyone's different, and we can see the goodness in each other. Yeah, you don't um, have to be a certain way or the way that you were born. You can just find who you are truly. Yeah, it was uh, that was a very very great book. Uh, I'm just moving stuff around on my screen. <laughs> You're not moving yet. Nobody can see you moving. Oh, uh, it's just not good. I'm trying to get your face onto this. There we go. That's as good as it's going to get. Yikes. I'm sure it's really good. So right now, Megan, what people are looking at is my face at the bottom, your face at the top, and then I've got Vashti Harrison's website. Yeah. And too many tabs. Please ignore all of the bananas tabs that I've got up there. Um, so this was the illustrator, and it says here, author, illustrator, filmmaker. Um, and I wanted to see what other books she'd done because I knew that I recognized her name, although I didn't think that I recognized her style. So she wrote Little Legends. Oh. So Exceptional Men in Black History, um, Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History, Little Dreamers, Visionary Women Around the World, um, Dream Big Little One. I love those books. She's done Festival of Colors, CC Love Science, CC Love Science and Adventure. She did the art for Oscar winning Hair Love. No way, I love that book. If I'd seen it, I was going to buy that one too. So the book Hair Love got turned into a short film, and the short film won an Oscar. Yeah, I did. It, it deserved to. It's so beautiful. Um, let's see what else we got here. Calling My Name, Forever This Summer, Love Like Sky, and The Turning. Those all appear to be, um, books for young adults, and so she's done the cover work for them. Wow. If I go up to film, I'm not sure what she's gonna have here. Oh, hasn't loaded. Oh, what is this? Open. Open Sesame? <laughs> Waiting. Looks like it wants to load. Oh, it's a Wix web page. That's why it's taking mm -hmm. a second. So she's got all sorts of film accolades, and she's got, oh, links to a bunch of her films. Field notes about the films. That's interesting. I wonder if we can find Hair Love. Hair oh, love. I'm sure it's definitely on YouTube. 
Watch, whoops, watch online. Oh, it helps if I spell it right, eh? I think I wrote Harl Love, which is not how Because they kind of do misspell them. They are for two, two four-letter words. I'm leaving So, <laughs> right? Uh, so, here is the film Hair Love. I'm going to link it in the description. It's 6 minutes, 48 seconds long. Um, I believe it was just this past, yeah, just this past Oscars it won for yeah. Best Short. Um, it's ridiculous. And this one did make me cry. The, this book that we oh. just read didn't make me cry, but this film, I was like, somebody sent it to me. And they were like, yeah, you're going to cry. And I was like, no, I'm not. And yeah, then the I was, I was the done. I was just done by the end of it. Um... So that's that's it for an uh, 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 that's it from us for another day, and this is the last Mega Mega Wednesday. Yep. Oh my gosh. Our last one. So if we're gonna do stuff every second week, I got a proposal for you. We'll yep. we'll still do Mega Mega Wednesdays, but we won't do them live. We'll just record them whenever we have time, and then. They'll still go up on a Wednesday, and, uh, yeah, but we'll have to figure it out. We'll talk about it. Well, we will. Okay. We're both going to be very busy in the next couple weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah, you with child care centers opening and me with uh, summer school. Yep. All right, then. Well, from Megan and I in our respective homes, be happy, be safe, and we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.